In today's video I'm going to show how to run an actual production board on the pick and place machine. So this is the board, uh, this is the one that we used as a demonstration previously. As you can see I've already applied the solder paste, I don't know how well that came down on camera, uh, using the stencil that I purchased at the same time as the bare boards. And so the next step is to get this mounted into the machine, get it aligned and then we can run the actual job. Now these boards are actually 0.8mm thick. Uh, but the machine is set up by default for 1.6mm boards, which is most of the board types that I use. Uh, and because I'm lazy, I don't like to have to reset the height and realign the machine each time I swap board thicknesses. So what I tend to do instead is take uh, another board and double them up, so that will give me 1.6mm. And I can then place them in the machine and it will be at the correct height, and obviously the height is important. You don't want to um, have the, the, the machine placing the components thinking the board's a different height than it actually is, otherwise it either won't press them down hard enough into the solder paste, uh, or it'll press them too hard, start deflecting the board, and you'll end up with them uh, sitting in the wrong place. So make sure you have the board the right way up. In this case, we're going to use the actual machine origin as the board origin as well so we'll push the board right up to that stop. When you put boards into these machines the clamps are quite nice, a very nice clamping system but they do need a bit of thought when you're um, adjusting them. So you can see here that this spring is nowhere near as compressed as this side and that's because we're only really clamping on one half of the machine if we put the same amount of force on this side, then the, as you can see, the, uh, the clamp rocks. That causes the board to be canted over, and you'll find that the components are placed in the wrong position. Um, where still the board can move during the cycle, and you might find that some of them in the right place and some aren't. So you need to make sure that it's, it's pressing down firmly and squarely, and that the board is properly located and is the right way up. So once we've done that, we can look at the um, the software, pick the right program, get the board aligned and then do the run. So we'll next look at the software. Okay so as I said unfortunately I don't have any screen capture software on this PC so I'll just have to point the camera at the screen. So what we do is we open the file that we want to run. Um, if you haven't set up the uh, origin points and alignment points previously then you need to edit PC calibrate and then enter the points that you want to use um, but I've already done that with this board it's just really a case of deciding which points you want to use and we'll look at that now when we line the board so select the program load it and now we will calibrate the board for this actual run so click on calibrate Mark 1, the machine will drive to the correct location. Now, because of the way the optics work on this machine, it is important that we don't have any uh, stray light getting into the cameras. So, you may have noticed on my previous videos that when the machine was running, I turned the external lights off. So, that's what I'm going to do now. It's also why the shutters close behind the machine. So, I'm going to turn off the main light so that we can see more clearly through the camera. If I now click on mark 1, that will take us to the first alignment point for the board. You can see that we've now got an image from the down facing camera of what should be the first alignment point, which I've selected as being this corner between the two boards. So we now need to accurately align that. Okay, and then once it's set, click on set. Do the same thing with the second mark. You can see this one's much further out. So remember that the board extends into the clamp slightly, so you need to go a little bit lower than you might expect, and then out to the true edge of the board. You know, don't forget these are V-score boards, so the board actually extends a bit further than the little white line that you can see. So make sure you take that into account. Click on set. And then do the same thing with the last mark. Same thing, the board extends a bit further out than it 
PS2, so make sure we're properly aligned. That looks about right. get an error message popping up at this point it means that you've got the calibration marks wrong or they're nowhere near where the machine thinks they should be so just check everything is uh, as it should be there. Okay what I'll do now is set up the camera so that we can watch the machine through its run. Uh, I will have to have the light turned off so it'll be a little bit dark but uh, at least we'll be able to see it examining the components and placing them. It does turn on the upward facing light each time it picks the components. We're going to be picking two components at once, and placing two at once, that will speed up the entire process and we're going to load the entire palette. So uh, essentially we're going to place all components on this palette. Okay, so the machine is ready to start the run. So I'll turn out the light and start up the software. Okay, so it's finished its run. That's 480 components in about 12 minutes. So average placement speed of around 2,200 components uh, per hour. Now, as I said in a previous video, I've actually slowed this machine down because the bench that it's currently on is not really suitable. So at full speed, it doesn't move around too much. So what we'll do now is remove the board from the machine. Um, get it onto the reflow oven and then we'll have a look at it under the microscope and see uh, how well it did. One thing I'd say here is that I've now run 22 of these particular pallets. Um, this is a, obviously a pallet design where we've got 4x5 boards on each pallet. Um, so that's pretty much 11,000 components and it hasn't missed a single one so that's fairly good going and none of the, um, the boards on the pallets have failed. They've all successfully reflowed and um, the soldering and the component placement was good. Okay so we'll get this onto the reflow and then have a look at it under the, um, the microscope. Okay so here we are at the reflow oven. Uh, we've got the board, we'll pop that into the oven. I've already preheated the oven so uh, it is warm. Um, as I said in uh, previous video it's best to do that to make sure that you get a, a good temperature profile. I've selected the correct profile and we'll start it running. 
and again I will fast forward through this part and we'll look at the results at the end. Okay, so it's finished the reflow profile. I'll turn the oven off now because it does make a bit of a din and it's a bit irritating. And we'll have a look at the finished board. You may have noticed there was some smoke coming out of the oven during the process and that's to be expected. The paste goes on, obviously as a, a paste, it's partly liquid and during the process all the liquid gets boiled off and it comes out as a, a vapour or smoke, so don't be too alarmed. Um, obviously if your oven keeps smoking after the process is finished then uh, that might be a cause for concern. Okay so we have the board on first inspection it looks quite good. I'll get it over to the uh, microscope, we'll take a closer look at it. One thing to bear in mind with um, pick and place machines and solder paste and uh, this, this entire process is there is no need for the components to be absolutely centered on the paste. The action of the solder paste when it's reflowed will tend to pull all the components into their kind of centralized position. It will tend to align them correctly. As long as it's the correct profile for the paste you're using and as long as the pads for the components are properly designed. If you find they're of jumping off the pads or attaching themselves to adjacent pads or just not aligning themselves properly then check the solder paste you're using check the profile is correct for that paste and then check that the pads that you've used on your design are suitable for the component configuration um, any one of those things can tend to throw the um, the design off okay so we've had a look at the board under the microscope and as you can see it's turned out very well and that's all there is to it it's it's just really making sure that you get all the individual steps properly configured and you'll end up with very good results uh, every time